I will be your doom! What happens if you murder the fallen Jedi Juhani? And perhaps more surprisingly, how does the Jedi Council react when you kill her Padawan lover as well? She had always been close to Juhani, and her death may have hit Belaya hard. There are two distinct times the player is given the option to kill Juhani in-game. A true Jedi would never bow down to the Sith. If this is your decision, I have no choice but to do battle against you. Kill her. Rend her flesh. Show her the fate of all who dare stand against us. Embrace the power of the dark side. If we chose to slay the Cathar on Lihon along with Jolie Bindo, effectively embracing the dark side ending, no immediate repercussions would come of our actions. Outside of shedding a few more pesky teammates. <laughs> However, much earlier when taking up the role of Jedi Padawan on Dantooine, the Jedi Council, as part of your trials, sends you to deal with a nearby tainted dark grove. None of the other Jedi at the Academy are permitted to help you in this task. But remember this, my young apprentice. A Jedi acts with patience and care, and those on the dark path are not always lost forever. There, we first meet the fallen Cathar, Juhani, now embracing the dark side, sending the nearby Cathounds to madness, and slaying any errant Mandalorians that cross her path. I will be your doom! From here, Juhani can be dealt with in two distinct ways post-defeating her in initial combat. Here. You... you are strong. Stronger than me, even in my darkness. The first canonical option is to attempt to redeem Juhani. It's then we learn she supposedly slew her master in a fit of anger and subsequently fled to the grove. I only wish things could have been different. If she were alive now, there would be so much I would say to her. So much I would apologize for. How can the council ever take me back with what I have done? Striking my master down in anger is unforgivable. We can then convince the fallen foe to repent for her transgressions and attempt to return to the Jedi Enclave, unscathed, to atone for her crimes, in which she agrees. As chance would have it, we learn that Juhani did not, in fact, strike down her master, yet the Jedi happily led her and us to believe that she did to see how we would react, to which Karth sums up the entire sordid affair pretty succinctly. First the Jedi trick you into becoming an enemy, then they welcome you back as a friend. I can't say I approve of their training methods. I do not know what the Council has in store for me, but I will trust in the Force in the way of the Jedi to help me through whatever is to come. I mean, if the Jedi were so eager to deceive one of their own, who knows what secrets they'd knowingly withhold from us, a newly founded Padawan. But what are the long-reaching ramifications if we take the second dark side option of defeating Juhani in battle and ignoring the lies of the Jedi and slaying her where she stands? You overestimate yourself, whelp. Post her demise, the Jedi Council upon our return are initially suspicious and questioned. It is most regrettable that Juhani could not be saved. We in the Council had high hopes for her in the future. In every heart, there is some means of redemption. Could you find none in Juhani? In which we can lie, as all dialogue options garner the same response from each Council member. Master, I couldn't see a way to save her. She attacked me without speaking. She was too evil to ever come back. Perhaps that was the case. It is most regrettable indeed. Heed her example. All are susceptible to the lure of the dark side. We must always remain vigilant against it. Go to Master Jar and inform him that the grove has been cleansed. I think you may be nearing the end of your apprenticeship. In every outcome, ultimately, we are not only forgiven, but given freedom to leave unpunished with the goal of obtaining a precious star map as our highest value to the Jedi Council, which we'll be telling later. However, there are some who cannot forgive this cold-blooded murder as a quote-unquote necessary transgression. Enter Belaya. 
Now, this is where KOTOR's writing shines, as there has been a concurrent subplot building the moment Revan and his party touch down on Dantooine, and the plot revolves around Juhani's friend, the Jedi Belaya. When first entering the Enclave, we are berated by Belaya, who questions. You there, Padawan. Why are you not wearing the customary robes of the Jedi? Do you mock the honored traditions of our order? Wait, are you a Jedi? My name is Belaya. I have come here to further my learning in the ways of the Force. Many Jedi come here to train under Master Ja. Any who belong to the Order should surely know this. You must be neglecting your studies, Padawan. We can then answer accordingly. However, Belaya's response is always the same, and we say, I believe you're mistaken. I'm not a Padawan. I'm Dash. I came here with Bastila. Bastila? I have heard of her. They say she has already mastered the art of battle meditation. Remarkable in one so young. Though I've heard she has a foolish pride in her own talents. But as for you, you claim you are not a Padawan? I find this hard to believe. The Force is strong within you. I can feel its presence. If this is some type of jest, it is in very poor taste. The Jedi Order is not a subject for jokes. I didn't come here to be scolded by you. No, I suppose you did not. I apologize. Look, I'm telling the truth. Please forgive the abruptness with which I first greeted you. It was harsh and perhaps unfair. My master often warns me that I must learn to control my emotions. I see I have much left to learn. I wish you a pleasant stay here on Dantooine. May the Force be with you. After her unexpected welcome slash tongue lashing, Belaya remains somewhat short-fused for a Jedi throughout our stay, and ironically, in our Padawan trials, she can teach us the Jedi Code. However, it's soon we learn why Belaya is struggling with emotions. You speak as if this were some foolish game. Have you no idea what is at stake? With power comes responsibility, and only by learning discipline and sacrifice can we truly learn to master our potential. I wish you luck in your training, Apprentice. There is much you must yet learn. May the Force be with you. If Revan succeeds at returning Juhani to the light side, Belaya would be joyous but composed in expressing her gratitude. And the two would spend time together until Juhani would join us on our quest for the star maps. You have done a great thing. One of our own had strayed, but you have returned Juhani to the Order. For this, you deserve the highest praise. If we instead chose to slay Juhani, upon returning to the Jedi Enclave, a grief-stricken Belaya will sing us garbed in the Padawan robes of a Jedi, regardless of our actions, will say. Juhani was a, a dear companion to me for many years. We spent many nights together alone under the stars. That will never happen again, thanks to you. Curse the Council for sending you, of all people, to speak to her. Could you have done nothing else? She had it coming, trust me. She had it coming, did she? She had it coming? Should you be talking like that? Do not presume to tell me how I should speak of anything. They should have known better than to entrust such a task to you. I did my best. I'm sorry. Pardon me if I find your apology rather disingenuous. Juhani meant nothing to you, and the Council should have known better than to entrust her life to you. Why didn't you go to her then? Why? Because the Council believed that my closeness to her might do more harm than good. And yet they send you instead. And look what has happened. The Juhani I knew deserved more than this. She deserved more from the Council and more from you. You. You did not even try, did you? Did it even occur to you that Juhani might have been saved? That she might be worth saving? I should kill you for what you've done. And yet, I can't. Can I? I'm a Jedi and we are sworn to protect all. Even the likes of you. Get get out of my sight. The very thought of the Council and of you makes me ill. Belaya then exits the Enclave, never to return. And you can ask Master Vandara about this if you speak to him again after being accepted into the Jedi Order as a Padawan, but before completing your investigation into the ruins. A Jedi must ever be seeking knowledge. What is it you wish to know? Master, I'd like to ask you some questions. What happened to Belaya? Mm, we do not know. She was training here until your unfortunate incident with Juhani. Then she simply disappeared. We would like any word of her you may bring. I do not believe she has died or fallen prey to beasts, but I worry that she may have done something rash. 
She had always been close to Johanne, and her death may have hit Belaya hard. Is there anything else you wish to ask? We can also ask Master Vrook about this after completing our investigation of the ruins. It is well that you are still alive, Padawan, in that you have not yet managed to fail us completely. Why is it that you are now bothering me instead of seeking out the star map? Saying, what happened to Belaya? The Jedi Belaya would seem to have disappeared. She had a lesson scheduled with Master Jar, but did not show up. I have heard someone say that she'd been seen leaving the Enclave, but I do not know where she would have gone. If you meet her, you may want to ask her why she left. We do not force anyone to stay here, so do not think to take that route. Is there anything else, then? However, this won't be the last we see of Belial. And probably the perfect time to bring up. Interestingly, Juhani was the first character in the Star Wars universe to be portrayed as a lesbian. According to David Gator, although the exact nature of her relationship with Belaya, as well as Belaya's sexuality, was implied, but not outright stated within the game due to censorship fears back in the day. But I think it's pretty easy to put the pieces together. And as you'd imagine, things with Belaya don't end here. After murdering her lady, lover than callously taunting her, but instead escalate further. When first travelling to Gorobarn and making our way to the entrance of the Sith Academy, there lies Juhani's old friend in ambush. Belaya has fully given herself to her dark passions. Approaching her, she threatens. You! I remember you. What are you doing here? Did the Jedi Council send you? I swear I will expose you if they have. Uh, do I know you? So you do not even have the decency to remember me. I have cursed your name every moment since we last met on Dantooine. I am Belaya, once of the Jedi, but now of the Sith. It was your murder of Juhani that placed this bitter blackness in my heart. I'll not suffer your insults. But you will. You pretend to be a Sith, and I know who you are. I have cursed your name every moment since we last met on Dantooine. If we instead attempt to persuade Belaya in saying, No, the Jedi certainly didn't send me here, and fail the speech check, she will say, You do not fool me for a second. The Council fawns over you and places all their hope in you to save them. You wouldn't turn on them. You are a spy and a murderer. It was you who killed Juhani and placed this bitter blackness in my heart that I cannot get rid of. However, if we succeed, we don't really succeed, and she says. I see. So you have come to join the Sith, as I have. I should have known that would happen, as should the Council. The Council is nothing but a slow and doddering farce, placing all their trust in you. And you failed them, just as you failed Juhani. Do you even remember me? I am Belaya, and it is your murder of Juhani that brought me here. Fortunately, I have learned the power of revenge. I couldn't touch you on Dantooine, but I can here. The Sith have taught me the power of freedom and revenge. For Juhani! Unfortunately for Belaya, combat is inevitable. But the good news is, if we killed Juhani at our level, then we certainly should be able to kill her. <laughs> After disposing of the vengeful lover of Juhani, Belaya, we can then return to Dantooine and report this to Vruk Lamar in the Jedi Council Chambers. Amazingly, the developers went to painful lengths to make sure that this quest came full circle with the Jedi Council, with an easily missed piece of dialogue that you can only get if you head back to Dantooine. His true concern becomes apparent, and he says, It is well that you are still alive, Padawan, in that you have not yet managed to fail us completely. Why is it that you are now bothering me instead of seeking out the star map? I have slain Belyar and Korriban. She was a dark Jedi. I find that disturbing. It is our failings as teachers that enable this to happen. Do not give in to the same dark urges as she did, or you may suffer a similar fate. You have a mission to attend to, Padawan. And as much as I may wish it otherwise, you are only hope. The Council has placed the fate of the galaxy within your hands. 
I pray both you and Bastilla are able to emerge from this ordeal as servants of the light. May the force be with you, young Padawan. It's ironic. Vrook labels the lady's passions as dark urges, yet arguably it was the self-righteous apathy of the Jedi Council's deceptions that saw both of the Padawans slaughtered. And to add insult to injury, there is zero retribution for Revan or his party. Perhaps it's the Jedi's ignorance, willful or otherwise, due to Revan's quest being far too important to let a few stray lady lovers stand in the way of overthrowing the Sith Empire. Thanks for watching, as you can tell I love making these videos, so make sure to like and subscribe for more Dark Lore.